What's up guys? It's here, it's me, chemical engineering guy. And we're going to continue our course of mass balance. Right now we are in the number one, which means we are in the introduction. And we are in section two, which is about how to account for mass balances. Now, we've seen scale up, we've seen type of processes, and we've seen a lot of system and theory about mass balancing. So you have no idea what I am talking about, just go back to the sections and you will find out what I am talking about because it's very important to understand all those topics because I will be talking with you about that and if you have no idea then it has, makes no sense to be in this course so please go backwards, learn it and continue so mass balance for non-reactive systems what does this mean is exactly what it says it's a system that has no reactions so, remembering we're studying steady state mass balances, which means no accumulation in the system. That's good. No reaction is involved, therefore there's no production nor consumption of matter. Or well, not matter, species. And the mass balance generally goes as inlet equals outlet. Let me show you why. Now, as there is no reaction, there will be no production or consumption. Why? And because it is steady state, so there's no accumulation. Actually, it's zero, which is very, very nice because we will have not to deal with these differential equations, etc. And let me show you mathematically how the equation gets into inlet equals outlet. So we had from the mass balance equation here, we have this it's inlet minus outlet. Plus uh, production minus consumption equals accumulation. So production, we have no production, we have no chemical reaction. And consumption, we also have no chemical reaction. Accumulation is zero by default because it's steady state. So we are left with only inlet minus outlet equals zero. Which I like better to pass to the other side so I can see that inlets are equal to outlets which is obvious because if you get something inside and it's a steady state, you have no accumulation, it must go out. Now, this topic here is very important. For n substances in a non-reactive system, you can only make n equations. And what does n substances mean? It means that either we have water and ethanol, we have n equal, equals 2, so what I want is to write mass balances. You know that you can always make a mass balance in the global section, which means in all the equipment. So if I had, I don't know, a distillation unit and had feed equals vapor and liquid, the mass balance will be something like F equals V plus L. Now, that's one equation, equation number one. But we could also do a mass balance equation based on water, which will be similar. X fraction of water in F plus, uh, times F. You also have the X fraction of water in volume and the vapor, sorry, and the X fraction, fraction in liquid. And not only that, we could also do it in the ethanol, which will be something like this. Okay, so we got another two equations to get a total of three equations. The problem here, guys, is that when you have two substances, you can only have two equations because one equation will be dependent. What does dependent mean? If you add this, you will get this. So either you get one and two, or two or three, or three and one, but never use 3, because if you use 3, you will get to the elegant yet interesting solution in which you prove 1 equals 1. So right now maybe you don't understand that much, but what do we have here is 3 equations and 2 nouns. So the problem is either overstated or something is wrong. So now, just remember, we can write always in an n substance balance, we can write always an n plus 1 equations. So I bring you this problem so you understand what do I mean. Imagine we have three balances. One, two, and three. Nice. 
and I want to solve for x and for q. So what I want is just 3 plus 1 equals q. That's number 4 equation. 3 equals x times q. Since I have q, I can just sit up here and I will get x. 3 equals 4, 4 times x, which will be 3 fourths. And now I actually have all the values. I have x and q, the two nouns I told you about. But I still have one equation. The logical thing will be either I substitute to be sure or stop. But if I'm looking for an extra value, this will not help. Look, because if we substitute 1 minus 3 fourth times 4, this first parenthesis will give you 1 fourth, and this second one is 4. So 4 times 1 fourth gives you 1, which is exactly the one I have here. So that's what I mean. You prove 1 equals 1, which is interesting yet not so useful. So guys, always do n balances for your n substance system. Anyways, let's continue with the next exercise. I will give you time to read it. I recommend you to read it before I read it. So give me, I'll give you some seconds. So now, let's continue with our aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide, which is sodium and hydroxide here, which contains 20% by mass. So that's kind of strong, that's probably super alkali or basic. And because of that, we want to produce a 8%, only 8% solution by diluting with another stream of 20% solution of pure water. Uh, what else? Of the 20% solution with uh, okay, yeah. No, actually, we have not. It's only water, pure water. Sorry, guys. Now they ask me to calculate the ratio in liters per kilogram feet and the kilograms of solution per kilogram of solution in the feet. So let me show you the diagram so we get this problem straight. We have a feet, yes, but we don't know how much. We have a feed of water, we don't know how much we need to mix, but we do know it's pure and we know both compositions, that's good. And at the ending, you know you want this product, but you don't know how much. So, we have to solve for this. What I recommend is first do a basis of calculus, which is simply this one here. This is convenient because in letter C, you will see that they ask you what will be the Q for P, if P val value is this one. So let's do it for this. I just write down here, and let's go for A, B, and C. So let's do mass balances a lot. Global is inlet minus outlet plus production minus consumption equals A. I told you no production, no consumption, no accumulation. Then we have inlet equals outlets. In the first one it's F plus water. The feed plus the water will give me the new product. That's good. Now, I have this other equation, which will be the mass balance for water. Look how I have always XWF. Let me read it for you. Is X means mass composition. W means mass composition of water and F means mass composition of water in the feed. So you can only multiply by F because this here and this here and this here they are not the same. You cannot say yeah, it's oh, all one, one, one or add them, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want to do, you cannot do it. This one is different from this one and this is different from this one. I use X only to denote composition. I use the letter W to denote water and the third subscript which is F is to show the flow which here is flow in the feed, flow in the water and the flow in the product so please make sure guys to understand this because this is very very important you will not understand what I am doing with the variables now I know I told you that if you have n substances, which is 2, you can only write 2 equations. 
but just for sake we're going to write it just to be sure yeah, you can do it because if not there's no problem but if you do it you will always prove yourself that you're right because if you get to the conclusion that 2 equals 1 you're wrong so something is wrong so the same x uh, composite molar comp uh, most mass composition of sodium hydroxide in F times F and we continue the same with water which this probably is zero this will go out but okay let's continue it and you will have the ending so from this system equation one two and three count all variables is F W P which is here we have three flows X W F X W double X W P we have three X W and we have X sodium hydroxide F, sodium hydroxide W, sodium hydroxide P. So if we add all, like, total variables in this system will be 9. We know some, we don't know another one, so don't worry. We will see that later. Now, let's account for every equation we know. We know the value of X, W, F, we know the value of X, water, P, and we know the value of X, W, this should be water. So don't get confused. We have this value, this value, and this value. Common sense because zero, come on guys, I told you. Like there's no, no sodium hydroxide in the water. So you know this, you know it's zero. So from here you have six knowns. Good. P we established the basis, so it's okay. So we only need to look for F and water. Nice. Mm, we have a total of 9 and therefore we can say we have 9 unknown for 9 equations which we can actually solve so that's good now to finalize or to end, give this to an ending we substitute the equations in the mass balance equation 1 and 2 we have this okay we just add the data we have this number we have this number and we have these both numbers two equations Two unknowns. Please, like two equations because it's three and four equations. This one and this one. And two unknowns because we only have F and W as unknown. Now, these guys is the only math balance you need to do. Actually, all the next is only math. Any guy that knows how to do some algebraics can answer this. Give this to any engineer, they will solve it so easily. Give them the whole problem, they will not solve it that easy. So, continue, you, you get this equation, then you just do this equation in number 4, you get an equation with only one, let's say one variable. Nice. Now, it's time to get back. In past equation, we have two variables, we substitute one variable, we get one equation with one variable. And you get both that. Now. It doesn't mean that we're done, it means that we have all the mass balance or all the information needed. But we are asked to do kind of stuff. Because if you read A, let me go back, they ask you the grams of water per grams of solution if it. So it's only F divided by W. You got F, yes, I got it. You got W, yes, you got it. So nice, we have the data. Now get back, sorry. They ask you kilograms of solution, which is P of kilograms of feet. So the produced divided by the feet. We have P, yes, we actually give the number, and we have the F which we calculated last. We got this. Good. And finally, well actually we have no here, but they ask you how much water do we need? This is the water flow is a direct answer. So that guys was one example of one mass balance in a non-reactive system. So hopefully you understood. If you have any doubts you can uh, send me mails or whatever. Please read the problem again, understand the problem, draw the, the problem with all variables and stuff and then more importantly do the mass balances here. This I think is the most important part.
not this, this is just mathematics. You could actually upload this to a problem, and if you know all the equations, you will solve it. As I told you before, it's only math. So, thank you guys, keep watching, keep going good. You can go to the next video. See you there. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.